Linda, 1050 AM, the station that needs no listener behind. Our sponsor time, and that is, um, I went, my mind went blank. SNJ Radio. SNJ Radio dot com. No negative news, no politics, just feel good music. Yes. And if you guys want to go back and listen to any of our previous shows, we had a, a really good lineup the past couple yeah, weeks. Yeah, we did. We did. Yes, we did. And then we have a, we have a good lineup for the next couple weeks after as well. So stay tuned. If you guys want to go back to listen to any of our previous shows, go to kcaradio.com or on Spotify and just look up KCAA, whatever works. All our links are on www.kcaawhateverworks.com. Yes. And you can have all our links there. We are booked for about a month out. If you want to be a part of the show, you can contact us on Instagram or you can email us and uh, one of us will get back to you. Yeah. Um, and for all the listeners who are watching us on Instagram Live, uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to hear the phone conversation that we have with our guest. So uh, bear with us. Maybe if you yeah. guys have any questions. If you want to listen through. in, you can go to kcaaradio.com and click the little play button on the top of the screen. Yep, watch us live, listen to us live. If you guys are listening in the car, again, 106.5, 10.50 a.m. So let's get straight to it, guys. We have uh, Edward Do Dowdy, or is it Doty on the phone? Oh, man, he hung up. He was mad. Uh, we'll have him call us back real quick. I'll, give him, I'll shoot him a, a quick text. Hey, call us back. Um, anyway, so while it, yeah, in the meantime, let's talk about what we did throughout our week, dude. I, you know, I'm not much of a runner, but I've been trying to, I've been going on morning runs. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So because, yeah. because of my medical, my medical condition, I can only run so far without my legs, you yeah. know, um, flaming up and stiffing up. Uh, but I need, I need a way to wake up in the morning, you know, cause I'm waking up and I'm bro, it's just. I stay in bed, you know, and then even though I open my eyes, I, I just lay there and I, I think, I think, and the next thing you know, I'm asleep again. So it's like, okay, what do I have to do in order to wake up and stay up? You know what people are doing now? What? Ice baths. Ice baths. You're crazy. People are doing ice baths to wake up, kind of get the blood flowing, and then go about your day. A lot of people work out after that, but, you know, you don't have to. See, today, I didn't do no ice bath, but <laughs> <laughs> I went for a run. Yeah, I came home. I made some breakfast, and then I worked out. Yeah, and then that's when I just I hit the racks and I fell asleep. I didn't wake up until you know after church. I didn't even get to go to church today, which which is okay. It's fine. There's always next Sunday. There's always tomorrow. Whatever. Right. You know, but uh, that that wasn't my plan. I have an app, and I think I think it's called Structured, and basically, um, it's like a time block, right? So you yeah. can make a list of what you got to do throughout the day but if you have a time block saying hey wake up at 6 work out from like 6 10 to 7 10 have breakfast from 7 10 to 7 40 like you really start knocking things down so and it's an app right and then it, it notifies you like hey it's time to take a shower hey it's time to read your book or go to marks you know like it, it makes sure that you're on you're on cue you know with, yeah. with what you want in life so uh, i've been doing that but the hardest thing honestly is just waking up so yeah see the issue for me is i forget to use those apps i'll download them yeah i have everything set up i'm ready i'll wake up the next day i'll go about my day dang i forgot to read the app really? <laughs> i forgot to load the app hey if you guys want to yeah if you guys want to share your ideas on how you wake up and what your morning routine is feel free call in at 888-909-1050 that's 888-909-10 Five zero. I also have a motivation alarm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So when it goes off, it's like motivational speakers, like you know Denzel Washington and stuff like that, just just like yelling at you through the app. But it got to the point where it's like it's kind of soothing, bro. I go to sleep and I'm yeah. just <laughs> and I just go yeah, and I just yeah, think you don't I wake, wake up. up. <laughs> yeah. But ice bath. There's this guy on Instagram and like TikTok, and he's doing an ice bath challenge every single day. <laughs> Until the Lions win the Super Bowl or get into the Super Bowl. Yeah. I actually yeah, I actually follow him. Yeah, it's crazy. And then he does these motivational quotes. Yep. So like and you really see him transform because the first yeah. time he did it, he was hyperventilating, freaking out. 
And then, like, he'd be like, oh, man, that sucks. He's like, why do I do this? Like, day by day three, bro, he was, he was hating it, yeah. you know? And then he got himself, like, a, a sauna and everything. So after, he can go in there. But then, like, now, he's just outside, just disciplined, mental strength all the way through. So Yep. He does his motivational quotes. And then after that, he, like, he puts different things on ice. And he'll bite them now. Yeah, and he'll like test it. Yeah, he'll test it. You get like, oh, this is an eight out of ten. It's got a good crunch. Eight good nine flavor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah. So, but yeah, yeah. There's there's different things out there. Uh, speaking of quotes, what's like some one of the, one of your favorite quotes that you like? Actually, today, the one he did today. Okay, what was his quote today? His quote today was, "Let me uh, try to get this straight." It's, um, he said, "It's not your job to be likable; it's your job to be yourself." Mm. Be authentic, and people will come to you. The right people. The right people will come to you. That's right. what he said. Man, I'm about to call our guest. <laughs> but anyways, um, you know, yesterday I went out to Palm Desert. And for all you guys watching live, in Palm Desert they did a, a water lantern night, which is, like, you ever oh, seen I the movie? About that. Yeah, you ever seen the movie, like, Tangled, where they do, like, the, the lanterns that float in the sky? Yeah, well, they have the ones that go on the water. Yeah, go on the yeah. water. And it's real simple. It's just a piece of wood. I would have went. I didn't hear about that. Bro, it was it was honestly really cool. So, you know, a lot of people, they went there to, like, release, like, their problems. Like, because they give you, it's a piece of paper, and it's, like, shaped as a box. And you put it on the, on the thing, and it creates a lantern. You get, a um, like, a fake candle that, you know, the battery ones. And then you use that and you like put it in the water in the in the pond or in the lake and then you just send your feelings away, right? Yeah. So a lot of people they had depression problems or anxiety problems, and then they'll write it down on the lantern and then like let it go as mm -hmm. like a as a symbol. Uh with me, so what I did, it was actually kind of funny. So they give you one marker and yeah. it's red for whatever reason, maybe because red stands out the most. But I actually have pictures, bro, and there is hundreds of people there. So you can imagine hundreds of people like pushing lan like lit up lanterns like into the water. Yeah. And then like when the wind came, it just they all started floating down the river and stuff. It was it was really cool. It was over in Palm Desert. I don't know if they have um, you know, another weekend that are doing it, but you get you buy your tickets. It was, it was pretty simple. They had vendors, it was really cool. So yeah. what I did for one of them, I had I think I had I had three quotes. I can't remember all three of them, but the first one was, hey, don't forget to smile, you know? I like that. I think that's I really like that. important. And then the second one, I said, things happen for you, not to you. That's one of my favorite ones. And then I forgot the last one was. So that was on, like, one face of the lantern. And then, and then on the other face, I drew, like, flowers. Like, everyone else, like, everyone draws, like, flowers and stuff on the lantern. But then I put, like, life, death, love, and, like, hate or something. Something stupid. <laughs> on, on like the pedals that's like a tattoo yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then for yeah. for my lantern to really stand out right because everyone put yeah. like pictures and like wrote quotes or like sayings or like whatever or their feelings on it um i just colored the whole face of one just completely red wow and let me tell you mine stood out i it, bet yeah because it was just like it was flowing you can just see it right but on the last face i put um, watch us live on KCA radio, like, and I put our Instagram, I put our nice, website, I put nice. everything. So like there when it go. stands out, people are like, Oh, you look at that promote. one. And then they promote. read it and stuff like that. And then they had a stage where, you know, for about five minutes, volunteers can come up and they can talk about whatever they're releasing with the lantern. That's and, cool. That's and cool. some of them were, you know, sex trafficker survivors. Other ones were like, my uncle died, um, last year, this day. You know, things like that. And they're all yeah. pretty sentimental. So when people wrote stuff on the lanterns, it was kind of like, you know, throwing away their griefs and yep. stuff. So yeah, it was it was pretty nice. I liked it. Yeah, I, I just see when the next event is, you know, I, I'm definitely interested in that or at least talking about what I have. Mm -hmm. I think you know. I think one of the funniest parts of that, though, is when they did. Oh, we actually have him. We have our guest calling in real quick. I'm putting on a quick speaker. Hey, Edward, you're on speaker. Hey, did you call the number? Yes, I did. We uh, we had you on hold until I, I was ready to introduce you. Do you mind calling back in that number real quick so we can just plug you in? Okay, um, something happened and it kicked me loose, but I'll try it again. Okay, yeah, just give us a quick call and we'll put you in, okay? Okay, all right, thanks. All right. Um, anyways, so 
since it was in a pond at one point all the lanterns did not float to the middle of the lake all the lanterns were just like right there sitting on the edge <laughs> and like you see people trying to push the lanterns back but then like the wind would just kick it towards the wall but at one point all the lanterns were just floating down the middle and That's it was cool. and it was like dusk it was it was i got pictures and videos i'll, I'll post it on our instagram for yeah. you guys to check out it was really fun definitely um, so our guest tonight oh there he is we're gonna plug him in hey edward Hello. are you there yes hey edward how you doing happy sunday hey happy sunday guys how are you doing good we're doing, doing pretty well. good hey uh before we good. start talking about um what we came here to talk about i i want to let the listeners know who you are and w what your background is. So um, go ahead and introduce yourself. And then afterwards, we have we have some people watching us live on Instagram that unfortunately can't hear you. So I'm gonna have to repeat that. But introduce yourself. Okay, I'm I'm Edward Dowdy, and I've been working with addicts and alcoholics for about 30 years. I'm also a bounty hunter and a stonemason by trade. <laughs> you said bounty hunter? Yeah, I didn't hear the bounty hunter part. You didn't you didn't notify me that. Oh, I thought Erna might have told you that. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's probably one of the, the, I guess, the most important parts of my life. Yeah, I was gonna say, if my name ever comes up on the registry, just you know, throw that in the trash or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. So, anyways, guys, uh, on the phone we have Edward Dowdy. He's a um, he works with addicts and he's a bounty hunter. And what else? Uh, stone mason by trade. Stone, stone mason by, by trade. Block. I like yeah. that. Awesome. So uh, tonight you, you were talking about how, wait, before we do all this, you said you had a radio show before, right? Yeah, I had a, a program in St. Louis and it was on AM radio and it was a uh, Christian broadcast. Oh, okay. okay. Do you remember the, mm -hmm. the uh, call sign? KXEN. KXEN. I like that. Yeah. So are you are you still out there, or, or where are you from, or where are you living now? No, I'm originally from Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I lived in the Midwest for oh, about 15 years. And I've been going back and forth from California to Missouri for about oh, 30 years. Okay, and are you in California now, or are you in Missouri? Yeah, I, I live in Orange County for the last five years. Orange County, awesome. Well, hey, you know, even though you couldn't make it to the studio, I want to thank you for calling in. It should be a good show. It's 15 minutes past the hour. You guys are listening to whatever works on KCAA, 10:50 a.m. and 106.5 FM. I'm your host, Sam. I'm Kyle. That was the first time I didn't say my last name. And we got Edward Doty here. We're gonna be yep. talking about a couple things, but the one thing I do want to talk about is what I posted today, which yeah. is the urban preacher the urban preacher project the urban preacher project can you talk a little bit about that uh urban preacher project right now is about 300 men strong and about 80 women strong and we have a program for housing uh here in california where if someone goes through their their uh, drug and alcohol treatment uh then they qualify for housing with us and we get them into housing and help them find jobs and things that's amazing um i had an uncle that was uh kind of a part of something like that up in uh i think it was victorville and uh his, oh, okay yeah uh he had he had some trouble early on uh, with addiction and uh you know he came to christ and uh you know it's it's a pretty solid program you know i i love what you guys do and um how long have you been doing that uh, this has been um, in Orange County now for about six years, and before that, I I was working with a man named Samuel Scazzo. Uh, he was one of the largest independent home providers in the Midwest, and uh, Dr. Samuel Scazzo, and uh, he had a, um, a program where he would buy up smaller hotels and and use those for transitional housing and rent up the rooms by the day, you know. That's so, amazing. Been so, doing it for for quite a while, about thirty years total. So all these people that you help, you know, provide them with housing and care and food and shelter, do they come to you or do you reach out and go to them? Uh, for the most part, there are people who have been, you know, went through drug and alcohol treatment programs, and then I hear from their counselors and and you know they get placed. They kind of have to 
you know, you got to be clean and sober to, to get in. That's one of the qualifications. And then um, you have to work because there's program fees. And they they get back into the mainstream fresh out of drug and alcohol detox. And, and uh, then they go, go into the treatment program after detox, I mean. And then they um, get back in the mainstream with us, you know. So it's set up in a place that, uh, you know, they have to want to get clean and they have to want to be a part of the program. Yeah, once once they yeah. get clean, they're they're welcome. It's it's reasonable reasonable prices for the rooms, and and they have a place to stay while they get back on their feet. You know. Now, is this a Christian program? Uh, we kind of keep religion out of it. I I have a Christian background, but we work with you know everything from Buddhist to Muslim, and That's we amazing. um. Basically, uh, I guess you'd say the backbone of it is Christian, but we don't, um, you know, we don't push it too much. It's it's uh, as as everybody uh, has their own beliefs. We let them, you know, we let them go with go with whatever their their own belief is. Well, I'm I'm glad you guys don't discriminate because I yeah. mean, right now, especially this time, there's a lot of open doors and a lot of open uh, personalities and characteristics, and religion is a big one that's yeah. out there. It's not so much just there's a all lot Christians. of programs too, and yeah. like you have to like baptize to be a part of that program, which you know I don't think is totally right. Yeah, if you don't want to be baptized, and you don't, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you, you baptize when you're ready to get baptized. If yeah. you want to get baptized, yeah. exactly. All right. Um, so yeah. is there a number or a website that they can call or, or look up in order to get into the program? Yeah. Yeah, if, if they're needing housing and they've been through the, the detox and the treatment program, they're welcome to give us a call at 657-200-0650. Okay. And, and how many locations are there here in California or just anywhere in the United States? Ooh, all in all. There's 15 men's and three women, so 18 houses altogether. Nice. And you guys, are they separated from the women and the men? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's no, there's no uh, co-ed stuff. It's all the men's houses and uh, the women's are separate. Now, does that mean there's like a different type of um, regiment when it comes to like, okay, so the women, they have a certain way or like lifestyle that they not necessarily have to live, but way of living compared to the men? Well, both both sides have a curfew during the week. The curfew is 11 o'clock. We, that's to keep the uh, traffic down and, and uh, you know, the neighbors happy. We don't want people coming in and out of the houses all hours of the night. Mm -hmm. So they um, have a curfew of Monday through Thursday, 11 o'clock, and then, Friday and Saturday, the curfew is 1 a.m. So Not in bad. between that, they they can uh, you know do whatever whatever they want, and then just be in the house by 11 during the week and 1 a.m. on the weekends, and then hold down a job and uh, get along with everybody. You know, is there a price difference between men and women? I'm just curious, like living status. No, wise. pretty much they're all even across the board. It's 150 a week which we did some research that should be about the cheapest you'll find rent in Orange County for 150 a week. Yeah, yeah. No, that that makes that makes sense especially in Orange County. Now, little funny side note, you being a bounty hunter, have you met any of your people that earned the house either prior or after um being in the program That's where you had question. to like come them down or anything? That's a really good question. Um I've had some uh some people try to get into our program that were that were pretty much uh, bad guys, and and uh, you know naturally they lie and they don't they don't tell you what's going on with them. But um, yeah, I've I've ran across a few a few people that uh, in the last five years that that uh, tried to pull the wool on us and it didn't work. Yeah, really. How do you how do you catch someone like that? How do you know when like they're up to something or or what are their motives of lying in the program? Um, really, really the, the only reason they would, they would want to lie is to try to get in, into the program. Maybe they're a, a sexual registry or, or there's some kind of a, something on their record that they don't want you to know. And, and so they'll, they'll, uh, 
maybe lie for that reason, but it doesn't happen too often. But when it does, we, you know, we're pretty particular um, about who we let live in these houses because we got to keep everybody safe. So we run uh, background checks and we make sure that they are who they say they are, you know. Very interesting. And how long do people usually stay in this program? Does, is it weeks, months? Is there ones that just never left? Or do you guys give them a, a, a deadline? Um, usually someone would be a matter of months. Sometimes it can go longer depending on, if, you know, if they don't have any family or anything around and they just want to stay longer. But usually uh, four or five months will get them back on their feet to where they can go get, get their own apartment and things, you know. Yeah. Now, are you the head of the Urban Project program, or are you uh, just one I've, of the I put together the Urban Preacher Project, Urban Preacher but Project, um, so. I work with some other organizations, too. And, and between the, the hotline in Orange County, that uh, it's a, um, a line that people can call to get, you know, get housing, and uh, the different counselors and drug and alcohol treatment programs that I work through, we, we mm -hmm. pretty much, you know, we can... We can help a lot of people. Right now, the numbers are about one, 180 total. If we count the, you know, the inpatient, outpatient, the men and women all together, it's about 180. All right. Um, you know, if you don't mind sharing, I, w I would like for you to tell us in the audience a story. Um, maybe one of the ones where, you know, it was a miracle they got back on their feet, or ones where you know, you guys tried everything you could and it just couldn't work out or it didn't work out. Or just tell us one of these stories that, you know, might touch well, on you. Yeah, there was one, one guy, he was actually a, a drug and alcohol counselor and he had relapsed and he hadn't, um, you know, he hadn't, hadn't been working a program. So he went back out there and uh, came in one evening. He was living with me. And he was upside down on the toilet uh, with his head in the trash can and his feet in the shower. And he was turned blue from a fentanyl overdose. Oh, man. So um, got him off the toilet and drug him out into the hallway where it was flat and Narcaned him. And the first, the first Narcan didn't do it and the second one didn't do it. So it was about two minutes in between. Uh, we had to fill him up down below with ice. And, uh, you know, so, so we'll pretty much go to any lengths once you're, you're in the program to try to keep you alive, you know. Yeah. Um, for the most part, that's the exception to the rule. That's like uh, something that stands out in my mind because that was really a, a scary moment. But once people grasp uh, a manner of living where they can, you know, stay sober, have a safe environment, a roof over their head, and, and uh, surrounded by a good support group, um, you know, things, things turn around for them. But, yeah, we've had some, some, some moments, that's for sure. So for the ones that were listening and may not know what Narcan is, uh, Narcan is a medical or a medicine that rapidly reverses an opioid overdose. It is an opioid antagonist. This means that it attaches to opioid receptors and reverses and blocks the effect of other opioids. Uh, it can quickly restore normal breathing to a person if their breathing has slowed down or stopped because of an opioid overdose. But it has no effect on someone who does not have an opioid in their system and, it, and is not a treatment for opioid use disorder. Um, you know, so examples of opioids include heroin, fentanyl, oxycontin, hydrocodone, all that good stuff. Yeah, more. <laughs> Not all that good stuff, there. my bad, but, you know, all that stuff. Um, and then you talked about, so you hit the guy with Narcan once or twice, and then you, you dumped him under ice for a couple of minutes? No, we had it, it, we got a bowl of ice and had to fill him up with ice from the bottom. Oh, yeah. okay. And what, so, what, what does that do? Just and, to tell, like, uh, it took a couple minutes, and then his eyes blanked a, a little bit. And then the uh, first thing he said was, I'm okay. And, you know, the thing is, you can't just let someone go back and lay down in their, in their rack or, or wherever after they've overdosed. you got to take them to the hospital because the Narcan will wear off before the opiate, and they'll go right back into their coma. Mm. So... 
No. So, yeah. So, so how do you like? Does does the government give you um, like like any of these Narcan pens or like help you with the program at all, or uh, do you do you have to outsource everything yourselves? Uh, we haven't had any government help yet, but I I do know there's some grants out there that we qualify for, so that might be coming. That's good. No. Yeah. There's two different types, right? There's an injection, and then there's like, uh, like a nasal spray or an inhaler. Probably a nasal spray, right? Yeah. Because I know there's one that you can buy, I think, over the counter, but it's not as effective and not as strong as like a, you know, the one yeah. in the ambulance and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's that's good. So, moving on, because we only got a couple more minutes before we go on our five minute break. Yeah. Um, how long has this urban preacher program, you know, been around? Well, it's been around a little minute, but the, the program, the housing program has been going for the last five years. Last five years. And are you seeing an increase of people needing help or reaching out? Yeah, there's, there's a great need, you know, mm -hmm. there's probably, um, probably a bigger housing need than, um, than anything else right now. For the people that are on the street, it's just, you know, there's nowhere for them to go, and, and there's not enough programs to, to house them, you know. Right. And is there any way the people out here, maybe the public, can help out? Sure. I mean, um, I guess one way one way you can help out is, is there's uh, your local food bank. If you want to help out your local food bank. And then uh, there's Recovery Road. That's another program that gives out food and, and different different things for for folks. So that's good. All right, so we're about to go on a quick break, but when we come back, Edward, I want to talk more about your your uh, bounty hunting because <laughs> that kind of threw me off the game. I didn't know that you were a bounty hunter, so I want to learn more about that. And we're gonna take a five minute break when we yeah. come back. You guys are listening to Whatever Works on KCAA 1050 AM and 106.5. I'm Sam Works. I'm Kyle Kerrigan. And we have From the Bureau of Economic Geology, this is Earth Day. The day after Christmas in 2004, a tsunami swept over Indonesia, Thailand, and 12 other countries. It killed more than 230,000 people in the most lethal natural disaster in recorded history. Most of us remember the news footage from those grim days. What you may not remember is that the tsunami was caused by an earthquake. Scientists now know it was the most powerful earthquake in 40 years, a 9.3 on the Richter scale. Its epicenter was below the ocean floor, about 100 miles west of Sumatra. The quake had the longest duration ever recorded about 10 minutes of continuous motion as the Earth's crust ripped to form a 50-foot cliff on the seafloor. The tear continued moving north for almost an hour, finally extending more than 750 miles. It was the huge volume of water displaced by this movement that caused the tsunami. The quake shook the ground everywhere on the Earth and triggered powerful aftershocks and earthquakes as far away as Alaska. The entire planet vibrated for weeks GPS data showed changes in the surface of most of the Eastern Hemisphere. Masses inside the Earth shifted, which moved the location of the North Pole by an inch. Even the shape of the globe changed, very slightly, but enough to increase its rotational speed and shorten the length of the day by three microseconds. December 26, 2004 was a shocking day in Earth's history for humans and the planet itself. I'm Scott Tinker, and this is Earth Day. EarthDate is produced by the Bureau of Economic Geology at the University of Texas at Austin. EarthDate is researched by Julie Hennings, written by Harry Lynch, and distributed by Mark Blunt and Casey Walker. For more stories, follow us on Facebook or visit earthdate.org. Tejibo Tea Club's original Pure Pouty Arco Super Tea helps build red corpuscles in the blood which carry oxygen to our organs and cells. Our organs and cells need oxygen to regenerate themselves. The immune system needs oxygen to develop and cancer dies in oxygen. So the tea is great for healthy people because it helps build the immune system. 
and it can truly be miraculous for someone fighting a potentially life-threatening disease due to an infection, diabetes, or cancer. The tea is also organic and naturally caffeine-free. A one-pound package of tea is $49.95, which includes shipping. To order, please visit TeheboTeaClub.com. Tehebo is spelled T like Tom, A-H-E-E, B like boy, O, then continue with the word T and then the word club. The complete website is TehuboTeaClub.com or call us at 818-610-8088, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. California time. That's 818-610-8088, TehuboTeaClub.com. Bob Vila here with my home improvement tip of the day. Though garage doors do a pretty good job of keeping bad guys away from your car, they're not so good at keeping out the elements. That's especially true if the floor in your garage is uneven what to do. Try this. Open the garage door so that the bottom is about head high. Cut a length of three-quarter inch foam pipe insulation to fit the width of the door. Then position the insulation against the bottom of the door with the slit facing down. Next, spread the slit in the insulation and use a screw gun or electric drill to attach the insulation to the bottom of the door. To keep the screws from tearing through the insulation, you'll probably want to add washers around the heads of the screws. Pipe insulation doesn't exactly add to curb appeal, so if you don't want it poking out the bottom of the door so it's visible from the street, just drive your screws a little more towards the backside of the door than the front. Get more info at BobVila.com and right here at home with me, Bob Vila. What is the Dell Wamsley Radio Show? Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. You need to stop being dependent on a paycheck. All of these self-help motivational people, they wind you up like a little clock. Click, 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 and then they let you go. Boom! Who is the show about? I'm your host, Dell Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. Learn the secrets of building wealth from Dell Walmsley. Weekdays from 11 a.m. to noon, right here on KCAA. If anyone didn't know who he is, um, make sure you guys are doing good. He's going to come after you. He's also, he works in the Urban Preacher Project. He helps people with, like, that have, um, who's going through addictions, who need a place to stay, who's, yeah. who has a job, who's just trying to get their back on their feet. Yeah. Um, also, people who have dealt with, human sex trafficking who are victims of human sex trafficking i should correct myself on that you guys should definitely listen back uh the the, the whole segment's going to be live on kcaa radio uh, dot com yeah so you can go back watch our previous shows it's going to be our most recent previous one mm-hmm. where you can listen to edward talk a little bit about that project and then real quick let me just uh sum up our sponsor snjradio.com no negative news no politics just feel good music there you go i like that and i want to thank everyone on instagram who are watching us live right now and all the listeners in their cars listening to us over here in loma linda redlands the whole around the whole ie um i just want to thank you guys for you know for participating so edward i know we're talking about the urban project but now i want to talk about your other side hustle your, your bounty hunting um you know, I watch a lot of videos on bounty hunting and like these people, like if they just paid for their t- for the most part, you know, what I mean, if they just yeah. paid for their tickets, if they just went to court, if they just did what they had to do, they can keep living their civilized lives. But then they end up trying to find loopholes or just ignoring the fact that they have, you know, things to make up. And yeah. then now they send people like you. So how does how does that work? You just get a call in the morning, say, "Hey, here, here's a profile of someone to go hunt them down." Or what? Tell me the rundown on this. Oh, how do I get clients? Yeah, how do you get clients? I like I like how you say I, clients. Um, I only take certain certain cases. I'm part of a task force, and um, we specialize in human trafficking. I mean, um, you know, if somebody's daughter gets kidnapped from Santa Ana and uh, taken to uh, Mexico or something like that. Um, I'll get involved Your your average bounty hunter though. Yeah. They're going to get their leads sent over in the morning and, and, uh, a list of, uh, you know, by, by matter of importance, you know, how much they owe, uh, if it's, if it's a misdemeanor felony, whatever. I think, uh, most of the guys will get them all sent over. I get emails, and then um, respond by email is how I get my leads. Okay. And 
does most of the time your investigations do they run smoothly or do you always run up with something that is like unexpected oh everyone's always different you know yeah. uh, you never know what you're going to en- encounter everything from from uh dogs to to snakes and everything else once you get in the houses and um a lot of times you'll be on the street too so you don't know uh, where somebody could be coming from it it's uh it's interesting, and and these guys are slick. You know, they they keep people under their, you know, under their fear, uh, to keep them bound in human trafficking. And uh, slavery is uh, alive more than ever in America. Mm. Here what, on, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Kyle. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, you do to keep yourself safe when when you go out on these encounters to 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 meet up with your clients per se? What are some of the what? I'm sorry. Uh, things that you do to keep yourself safe. Oh well, we, you know, I wear a vest. Um, I wear a ski mask. Um, that picture that I sent you, I think I had uh, uh, probably a semi-automatic in my hand and one around my neck and two on slings under my arm and one in the small of my back and probably a blade in my boot you know so you're we, all um, strapped up look at you what we kind go of... in pretty we go in pretty hard yeah when you say we okay i know you said you're you work with the task force but how many people do you go out and like deploy all these uh, lethal force on like is it like you and like six other guys or is it a smaller bigger team or uh three three other guys okay yeah have you some 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 of them are retired law enforcement you know, so it's like the modern day A team. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys been into any like serious life situations? Yeah, yeah, we were shot at back in September in Mexico City, and uh, we wound up bringing two assailants back. Uh, they had some girls that were underage. Uh, one of them was from Biloxi, Mississippi. The other one was from right here in Orange County. So, and you guys don't really have a um, jurisdiction. You guys go anywhere where people get trafficked or kidnapped. Yeah, yeah. Anywhere my passport will take me. Where's uh, where, you know? where's the uh, so, furthest you've been? Hello. Hello. Okay. Edward, ahead, you, still, you still there? Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, no, it's all good. Uh, where's Where's the furthest you've been, uh, you know, to meet up with a client? Uh, Belize. Belize? Oh, wow. Belize, yeah, on assignment, you mean, right? Yes, yeah. on assignment. Yeah, Belize. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. And how often do you get these assignments? Um, it, seem, it seems two or three a year will pop up. Some of them I can accept. Some of my steer over to the other gentlemen. Mm. And how long do these assignments go on for, these investigations? Oh, they can go on for months. You know, you got to track. Once you get these people, you got to track them, and you got to find them where they're at, and they're slippery. You know, they'll move. They'll change their jobs. They'll move their location. They'll change their names. drive different cars. They'll switch plates on cars and and how you know. how do you even get into this? Do you have to be like, you know, DOD certified, or like you have to have some requirements behind your belt, or some training, or how does how do you become a bounty hunter in, in this specific case? Um, the the well, the way I did it was I was brought in by a bounty hunter to help him. Oh. So I was brought in by another bounty hunter, but he had worked for a bondsman in East St. Louis, which is one of the murder capitals of the United States. And he had a lot of homicide cases and things that I would help him on. And you did that for how long? Hang on one second. Okay, go ahead. Um, So how long were you have to be uh, an apprentice before you start taking up your own assignments? I worked with him about a good year. 
that's not bad. Is this something that you recommend to anyone who's like, hey, I always well, want to be a bounty hunter? <laughs> I've, I've, I feel like that um, job isn't for everybody, huh? <laughs> it's, it's interesting, you know, if, if you've got a passion to, to help people that have been, you know, forced into human trafficking or something, yeah, I would say go for it, man. Mm. There's not enough people out there doing it. That's probably true. There's more people out there human trafficking than there is people trying to stop them, huh? Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty big numbers. There's a lot of people human trafficked right now. Yeah, I was just talking about this past, well, yesterday when I went to Palm Desert, we did the water lanterns and someone came up on stage and she, you know, shared her life experience, how she was a victim of human trafficking and extortion and all this crazy stuff. But now... You know, she's in her mid 40s, I'd say. She owns like three businesses. She's doing really well. But you can tell that it really, you know, scarred her, did some damage on her uh, permanently. And her she's, she's so. going to come on next week? Uh, no, not, not next week. We have this next month booked um, with a whole bunch of other um, car- uh, people. However, she's laid her down probably okay. about like a month and a half. Okay. So, yeah. I know, Edward, you were telling me, like, oh, so what's your guys' show about? And I, and I tell you, each week is it's completely different. different. Yeah. Something different. So I'm glad you came on and talked about the Urban Preacher Project and, and even bounty hunting. I, I think that's really cool. Um, like you said, not a lot of people do it. So, you know, props and respect to you. Um, is there a point where, you know, it, it really hits you? like to the heart where maybe like you thought about like, I can't do this anymore. Or was there like a, a threshold or breaking point in this job? Yeah, man, it's, it's brutal. You know, when you see, especially when they've been abused and misused and you know, this last guy, um, not to say too much, but he, he had this girl get a tattoo around her neck. That was like, like a, uh, the size of a bib. It was huge. Oh, wow. And it was just it was just what he wanted her to have on there. It was nothing that she chose or anything else. It was pretty degrading, and that's one of the first things uh, that she said once he was he was handcuffed. Actually, he wasn't even handcuffed yet. His his feet were underneath my my truck, and we we're waiting for the police to get there. She, he said, or she told me, she goes, he did this to me, and he, she pulled her, her shirt back and showed that it was just one gigantic tattoo. Dang. And I said, he did it himself? She said, no, he paid somebody to do it. I'm like, wow. Right. So, yeah, there's some sick people out there. And, and uh, when when you think about um, someone's son or someone's daughter being being stuck in such a predicament, you know, it's, it's hard. It's hard not to, you know, not to do something. So there's a lot of a lot of people that probably get drawn into this type of thing just by you know family members or neighbors or somebody getting involved with somebody you know and mm-hmm. going down the wrong road and you know they, they uh, pretty much just control once they get them there's there's a whole group of people that import people in take their documents when they get here and just control them you know all the way up till death wow. so are there are there any signs or patterns that you see with these people that you deal with in terms of like their personality or their movement or even like how they operate Ooh, when it comes to sex trafficking? That's a really good question. Oh, the traffickers? Yeah. Um, yeah, they're shady. They're, I mean, they're real dirty. They're, um, you know, they're all about the money. They're all about using people, uh, taking advantage of them. Um, do they do they do they blend in with the crowd like with society like how do you know if someone's like hey I don't feel right about that guy is there is there anything that stands out with them well some of them some of them you know and and then things might might stand out to you that that really you're just you know judging them or something a little bit because sometimes there's really you know, nothing to tell. I mean, they look like a normal person mm. and, uh, all of a sudden you find out what monstrous things are going on. You know, um, you can't really tell so much by, by looking at them, uh, you know, 
There's a lot of uh, a lot of folks that are that are tattooed from head to toe, but they're good people. Yeah. You know? So really, uh, it's more their actions, you know, that they'll 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 try to um, control and manipulate, and then uh, once they got a chance to make their move, they'll pull them away from their family and their people, and and put them in the business, you know. What about the victims? Like, if you're out in public, is is there is there certain like, like ter- characteristics? Yeah, like char- characteristics that someone will show that 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 they're in the middle of you know being trafficked or you know something that you know like a help me sign. Yeah, like an SOS. Well, one time there's a place called Courtesy Restaurant. And um, it just so happened we were in Courtesy Restaurant, three of us, and uh, this was our task unit. And we heard this billowing sound. We heard a smack and then a billowing sound of somebody, well, you know, a weeping woman. Well, we all get up. We head to the back of the restaurant, and there's this guy, and he's got two gals at the table there, and one's crying, holding her face. And... As we walk by, we kind of were looking to see what the noise was. And we look at his table, and the guy is like, uh, uh, what are you looking at? You don't want none of this and all that. And so we asked the girl what happened. And she said, he hit me, and he's holding us against our will. So at that point, you know, uh, it broke out into a pretty much of a scene. And uh, we drove the guy out, and that's the guy who had his his uh, feet underneath my truck while we waited for the for the police to get there. And uh, the one gal was 18; he had had her since she had just turned 17. And the other lady, I think she was 19. Mm. So they were forced into human trafficking by bullying. And he told them that he killed their families. He told them that he would, uh, you know, they'd never. They'd never see their their family again if they didn't listen to him. Mm. And these were girls, just American girls. So, you know, they get plenty of foreigners who don't speak English and can't tell somebody right away what's going on, and they traffic them. And it's even Mm. harder for them because they don't speak English. Right, so they can't tell you, like, hey, he's holding us against our will or... You know, I'm getting trafficked or anything like that because they don't speak English. Yeah. Yeah, but um, you know, they're they're scared. Some of them, some of them won't say anything. They're just they're just afraid, and they're they, you know, they're under under threat. And you can't really do anything unless you get like liable evidence, right? Like even if you walk by, let's say, like a table at a restaurant, and you can just tell in these girls' eyes, like they're living in fear, like they're asking for help through the eyes. But because nothing is said or you haven't got any profile or an assignment on it, like you can't really do much, right? Because you can get in trouble if, if you just act upon your own emotions, correct? Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard. Sometimes you have to really watch it. You know, there's rules. and, and uh, But I think um, for the most part, if somebody's trying to let you know that they're being human trafficked, that once you make eye contact with them and, and – uh, and, and you know get get the information that that the assailants with them or are their their uh, perpetrators with them then uh, it's it's easy to see what's going on and you can you can act from there and at least get the police involved that way you know get get another opinion of of uh, what the heck's going on have you ever got a victim from human trafficking and took them in under the urban preacher project or how, do they have any correlation between the two that you, two jobs that you do? Uh, not too much. They usually just go back with their parents. Oh. Okay. In Cal in California, it's only been the two girls, and they both went back. One went to Biloxi, Mississippi, and the other one went back to Orange County. But you you had had uh, victims from that go to the Urban Preacher Project, right? Yeah, there's been other ones. For the, for the most part, they just go back with their families. Well, that's good. Do you build a relationship between any of these people, whether it's the victims or the people from Urban 
uh, preacher project? Yeah, yeah, they all become friends pretty much like family. Even even with you as as a someone who works there. Yeah, it's it's pretty much a family. Well, I'm good. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, we only have about four more minutes uh, left yeah. on the show. Uh, Kyle, is there anything else that you want to ask, Edward? Yeah. Um, when it comes to trafficking, you know, the biggest one is sex trafficking. Uh, what are some other other forms of trafficking that you know other you know our, our viewers and listeners can look out for? Oh, they'll they'll traffic for anything. Um, you know, the any any type of uh, labor that they can get and not have to pay for um you know they'll they'll trick they'll trick the the girls by advertising for uh, modeling jobs and things like that when really they don't have any modeling jobs um they'll advertise in in uh foreign newspapers and things for people to come and uh have a job as a nurse or have a job as something in, in america and they'll call on it when they get here they immediately steal their paperwork and force them into human trafficking, you know? Wow. So yeah, it's pretty much just, just do your due diligence when you're, when you're checking into jobs and, and when you're, when you're looking up uh, what's going on with companies and just make sure it's a legitimate company, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I think that pretty much wraps it up. We got about two minutes, but Hey, rapid fire, or <laughs> quick question. Where's the scariest place you've been? Like what city, what country? Oh, the scariest place. Let's see. Hmm. I guess the, the most, the most horrifying things would have been in St. Louis. In St. Louis. Really? Yeah. Yeah. St. Louis is another murder capital. Um, a lot of luck. They were at one point. They were uh, chopping people's heads off for for uh, being in the wrong neighborhood and and uh, you know just the wrong color and different things. Wow. Yeah. Well, make sure yeah. you wear a rainbow East jacket. St. Louis, St. Louis, it's scary stuff, you know. All right. Hey, Edward, I want to thank you for your time. I appreciate you coming on. Uh, fortunately, we're out of time. I'm going to have you on for the future. We got tons of more topics and questions for you next time. You guys are listening to Whatever Works on KCAA. I'm Sam Works. I'm Kyle Kerrigan. And this is Edward Doty. For information, recreation, 